Well, Scott Sager with you here again. Thank you for joining us for the Legal Minute, sponsored by Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins LLP here in Rochester. Today we're joined by one of the managing partners, Ted Wagoner. Thank you for joining us. Glad to be here, Scott. Well, we've had a lot of folks commenting to me, Ted, that uh, they're enjoying these pieces. And uh, so it's just a little tidbit of some legal information. And and uh, if folks have questions, they know they can always contact Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins. That's what we're hoping to do. It's just a little educational piece. Yeah. Uh, hopefully it's not considered a hard sell. Right, right. No, not at all. But uh, today we've got a new topic. What are we going to talk about? Well, we thought we'd talk about trusts. Okay. Um, from time to time, uh, we'll get people who will call in and say, I, I got a trust. I'm embarrassed to say I didn't come to see you, but I've got this 50 or 60 page document that's a trust. <laughs> Uh, and I don't know what I have. Yeah. Can you sh can you meet with us and and share with it, uh, with us what what document we have, what powers we have, mm -hmm. uh, what have we bought into? Right. And so we're glad to do that. Um, uh, we'll sit down, go through the trust with them. Uh, when you get a fifty or sixty page trust, mm -hmm. and I know most of the people in Fulton County pretty well, mm -hmm. the business people and all. We don't have very many that need the 50 or 60 page trust. I understand. Um, they've got a lot of things in there that might work if you're a Rockefeller, mm -hmm. they might work if you're a Kennedy, but they don't work if you're a Fulton County resident mm -hmm. because with the way the tax laws are these days and so forth, uh, you know, unless you've got 15, 20 million dollars, you don't need some of the uh, things that they're they giving you more there. than you need in some of these larger trust documents, right? Okay. Because uh, number one, it impresses you, and number right. two, they're covering the waterfront. Uh, but, but they don't ask the questions about your family, okay. about uh, what things that you really might need in a mm -hmm. trust. The practical pieces of it, exactly. There are a variety of different kinds of trusts, okay. And uh, so I thought I'd just kind of quickly go over those, Please. so that people understand what we're talking about. When you see that uh, so-and-so put their house in a trust, mm -hmm. that is almost always what's called a revocable living trust. Okay. Trademark names are loving trusts and family trusts and things like that. But it is a trust that you can get into and you can tomorrow turn around and get out of. Mm -hmm. The IRS says, uh, we don't even care about that trust until you die because it's... Uh, it's just a what they call a disregarded entity. Okay. It has important legal significance under state law, but under federal tax law, it doesn't have any um, any impact. The other kind, of, since that's a revocable trust, mm -hmm. there's also something called an irrevocable trust. Okay. I've Re heard both terms. Exactly. Revocable means that I can get into it, and then I can revoke it and get out of it. Okay. An irrevocable trust means I get into it, but I can never get out of it. Okay. Which means it's a very dangerous instrument because Absolutely. if you put something in there, it's gone. It's not yours, and the trust instrument tells you what happens to that property mm -hmm. after that. We've seen a few people that have uh, accidentally or ill advisedly gotten into mm -hmm. irrevocable trusts um, because because people just didn't understand sure. the nature of them. Mm -hmm. They found it on the internet, and mm -hmm. boy, it's easy to sign one of those sure. things, plug your name in and move on, but uh, it does have some impact. Yeah, and legal ramifications as well. So exactly. be wary, as we've said multiple times on this program, over the internet and how quickly you can do things that are binding. I like it when you, when you say those kinds of things, Scott. <laughs> yes. Sounds better coming from you. <laughs> Just worried for my viewers out there, so uh, it's good protection. Right. Now, I didn't mean to interrupt, but let me back up just a second. Maybe mm -hmm. I did mean to interrupt. That's all right. The purpose of the trust. What's it doing for me? Well, the purpose of the trust is that it takes it out of your normal hands, okay. where you may be the owner of, let's say you, you own your house. Mm -hmm. Well, you set it up into a new entity, the trust, okay. with a different set of rules and regulations. Gotcha. And one of the things it does is, if I own my house in my name, mm -hmm. as I do, mm -hmm. at the time of my death and at the time of my wife's death, that will go through probate. Mm -hmm. We talked about probate yes, on an earlier program. If I put it into a trust, when I die, the trust continues. I see. So it's a non-probate transfer. For a lot of good reasons, mm -hmm. you will want to do that. 
Uh, it does avoid probate. It could save you some money, mm -hmm. cost you up front, save you some money later on, mm -hmm. or at least save your kids some money. Um, but you set it up, you you add some very specific and different rules. Mm -hmm. And there are protections that, that go along with that is one of the reasons that folks would enter a trust? Right. Okay. Yes. And, you know, if you... Uh, are getting older and you're not certain about your mental capacities, put something in a trust, name a trusted person, mm -hmm. family member, or could be a trust officer, to handle things for you, that's a good thing to do. I see. That way you don't mistakenly wake up someday and give your house away. Right. The trustee won't allow you to do that. I understand. So, so again, those protections in place. Exactly. Wonderful. So that's part of the purpose. One of the other things that we will oftentimes do is we'll write what's called a testamentary trust. And a testamentary trust is a trust that's written inside your last will and testament. Okay. We do that oftentimes if it's um, a contingency that you don't know if it's going to happen or not. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the one we write the most often is what's called the grandparents' trust. Okay. If I'm leaving something to my children, you know, my children are in their uh, 30s now. Mm -hmm. uh, if at some point in the future something happens to my children, I want to have restrictions on the property that would then go to my grandchildren. Uh -huh. I don't want to set up a whole different trust when by adding two or three pages mm -hmm. to my will. Very interesting. I can cover that and then protect the money for my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And in that instance, I'm usually protecting them from themselves, from mm -hmm. making the mistakes you make when you're 18 or 20 Absolutely. or 22. Taking all the money and going to Vegas for a weekend. Going to Vegas for a weekend or taking all your friends to Hawaii <laughs> exactly. until you run out of money. Yes. We've seen that happen a couple of times, okay. and so we, we want to protect people from that. Very interesting. Very interesting. Then there's one final trust I'll just quickly mention because it's an irrevocable trust mm -hmm. that we use for a specific purpose. Okay. The purpose has gone down over the past few years as the federal estate tax has gone up. Mm -hmm. But we used to set it up for a life insurance trust. Okay. And in order to qualify under the federal tax laws, it had to be an irrevocable trust. I see. So we would put a life insurance policy inside the trust and have the trust pay the premiums out of gifts that you make to the trust. Mm -hmm. But you could then move sometimes millions of dollars mm -hmm. to your to your children or grandchildren right. for the cost of a life insurance policy. Right. So, uh, as we talked about earlier, trusts are one, well, there are a number of tools mm -hmm. in that toolkit of uh, state planning that uh, Andy's talked about yeah. and I've talked about. And we want you to know that we're on top of it. You don't really have to be, right. but we're willing to explain it to you if you've already gotten yourself into one of these things. Well, a lot of this uh, information that's coming across, these protections that we've talked about in the various episodes, they are so nuanced. And there are truly many ways to skin the cat, if you will, mm -hmm. that it, it is invaluable to have a law firm such as Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins with that experience. Right. Because I, I can go to the internet and I can read and read and read, but the practical experience that you have with these protections and which one is right for the individual client, you can't find that on the internet. Well, and if you could, it would take you hundreds of hours of Right, reading. exactly. Because we've put that in yeah. over the years. We'll, yeah. we'll read the cases, we'll see the differences from you know, one trust term to another mm -hmm. that you may not catch Absolutely. just because you're not that familiar with the lingo. Yeah. Uh, or some of the professional concepts behind some of the things we're talking about. It's amazing. And I, I expressed to Andy in our last discussion that uh, the amount of information that has to be stored in each of your attorney's heads is amazing. It truly is. Mm -hmm. And this is within the day and age of computers. Right. I can't imagine what you had to store in your heads prior to that. Um, well, it, it's not only what you store in your heads, but what you also know how to find. And yeah. if you look at the books around us, yeah. Now, we don't open these books very much anymore sure. because uh, because it is on the Internet mm -hmm. and it's handy and it's sitting on our desktop. But the books that are sitting around you are what one small firm in one small town yeah. had to have yeah. just to continue to operate. And one of the reasons that attorney fees are kind of salty is because sure. you have thousands and thousands of dollars of resource material yeah. uh, that you have to provide every year, and we still do. It's amazing. Uh, so. It's an amazing amount of information. 
they're all here to protect you, your assets, your loved ones, your future, your legacy. So uh, I would encourage you to, as always, contact uh, the folks here at Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins. You have a wonderful slogan. I'll let you uh, plug that as we close today. But uh, About being the law firm yeah. built for uh, your current and future legal needs. We plan to be here for a while. Yeah, I like that. Current and future legal needs. So uh, Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins here in Rochester. I want to encourage you to come down and uh, talk to them. Give them a call anytime, and they'd be happy to meet with you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you very much for your time today. We're going to see you next time here on The Legal Minute with Peterson, Wagoner, and Perkins. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.